Hi there. Welcome to part two of the week three learning guide for college algebra. We're going to be focusing on complex numbers and quadratic equations. Now, if you missed part one of the week three learning guide, I'll be sure to link it down in the description so that you can access it. Also, if you want a copy, a hard copy um, of the document here so that you can be taking great notes along with me, you can also download that in the description below. So please take a look at those. Finally, before we jump in, don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you get notification every time a new video is posted. I'd love to help you with any concepts that you're having difficulty with. So let's go ahead and get started. Here in number one, we're asked for what is the square root of negative nine? Now, up until this point in the course, we really haven't, we've dealt with square roots, but they've been all positive numbers. So if I ask you what the square root of positive nine was, you'd feel really comfortable doing that. But in this point in the course, we're ready to start talking about what are called imaginary numbers. So I'm going to split this up into the square root of negative one and the square root of nine. And I do that because square root of nine is very familiar to you. But this square root of negative one, we got problems with, right? Because how do you do that? How do you have two numbers that multiply how do you have a number multiplied by itself that'll give you negative one? Well, you don't. And that's why we call this the imaginary number. Because the square root of negative one, we let that be i. i for imaginary, right? So if we ask for the square root of nine, we say that is three i. So I'm going to put this in my notes really big. The square root of negative 1 is i. That's what it means every time that I use it. And one other thing, you may have seen it like this. If I square both sides, I get that i squared is negative 1. And so we'll use that as well in our time together today. Now here in number 2 then, I am looking to rewrite this expression. And so here's what these directions are saying. Hey, get the i out of the denominator. Okay, that's in plain speak. <laughs> that's what these directions are saying is take the i out of the denominator, but you got to do it by the right rules, by following the rules. So let's take a look at it. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate. Now, if you saw my last video for week three, you'll know that I talked about rationalizing the denominator and using a conjugate as well. But conjugate simply means the same terms, different operation between them. So for instance, I have three minus two i, its conjugate would be three plus two i. Since I multiplied the bottom by that, I have to multiply the top by that as well. Just like we did before, I want to make sure to put those in parentheses so that we multiply through correctly. Now, I'm going to distribute on the top the 4. So 4 times 3 gives me 12. And 4 times 2i gives me 8i. And then on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and use the box. Okay, you've seen me do this in other videos. I'm just going to use a piece of paper because I don't want to take up so much room there on my note sheet. I'm going to multiply 3 minus 2i times 3 plus 2i. And then let's go ahead and fill the boxes. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative 2i is negative 6i. 3 times 2i is 6i. 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. So you could see that the 6i's cancel, and that leaves me with 9 minus 4i squared. All right, so good job on the multiplying. Now we need to simplify a little bit further. Remember, i squared is negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and make that substitution 
I've got 4 times negative 1 now. Look at your denominator. I've got 9 minus negative 4, which is the same thing as 9 plus 4, which is the same thing as 13. Now, one last step to write it in this form that it's asked us for is split it up into two fractions. I've got 12 over 13 plus 8 over 13i. And I hope you can see where I just split those terms in the numerator by giving them both the denominator. All right, one more to go for this part of our learning guide. And it's asking me, what is the discriminant for 4x squared plus 6x plus 7? And what does this tell us about the number of solutions? So I want you to see the notes I left for you about the discriminant. And you might be thinking, well, where do these A's and B's and C's go? Well, I'm glad you ask. Because when we write a quadratic equation in its standard form, we have A's and B's and C's. Those are the numbers in front of X squared is A. The number in front of X is B. The number by itself is C. So I'm going to move this 7 over to the left to get it in the same order here. I'm going to move it by subtracting it so that you can easily see what A, B, and C are. A is 4. B is 6 and C is negative seven. So now use our discriminant notes. The discriminant is B squared, that's six squared, minus four times A times C. Okay, let's find this value. I've got 36 minus 16 times negative seven, 16 times negative 7 would be, I'm going to check my arithmetic here. I think I know what it is. 16 times negative 7 gives me negative 112. And so the discriminant is a positive 148. Positive 148. So look at your notes. If the discriminant is positive, there are two real roots. And that's what that tells us. So I hope that helps you with the week three topics in this part. If you need more math help, feel free to connect me on my social media uh, as well as leave me a comment below. I would love the opportunity to explain, help you finish up, understand. I want to see you be successful. So please reach out if you need to. Also, the biggest thank you you could ever give me is to like and subscribe the, and uh, share with your friends the videos and how they've helped you with your concepts. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye for now.